Secrets of the trade. Franken Jeep yet. Back end was totaled out. No rear fenders. Hit so hard that the seats don't adjust. Filled with junk. Franken Jeep. This Jeep was totaled out. And I thought, what the heck? It can't get any worse. Let's see what we can make out of it. That is the ugliest Jeep So I found this Jeep called the Full Metal Jacket Jeep by Starwood Motors and fell in love with it and wanted it. But I've got champagne taste on a beer budget, so I'm going to do the best I can to get that Jeep without busting the bank. So the first thing I needed to make a Full Metal Jacket Jeep was a Jeep. That's when I found the Franken Jeep. Ugly little sucker hid way back in the back of a parking lot. It was totaled out in an accident when I bought it, and this is what it looked like when I pulled it off from the lot. Still full of the other people's junk, broken glass, all of their stuff. Did you take that one glass piece out? No, I'm just oh. saying there was no glass in the window. Oh. Rear quarter panel's crunched. Well, is that how you're going to connect it? That's how I'm going to bolt it on for the time being. Nice. All right, I'll move the charger out of the way. I'm going to have to notch these so it sits tight against this. Oh, notch right where the... This part of the frame, yeah, so it sits tight. We didn't have a bumper. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I needed one fast. So Frankie and I got a little creative. <laughs> With my new temporary bumper in place, that let me at least drive this thing around to see what else was wrong with it. I bought this Jeep for super cheap, which let me put more money into the fun stuff, like the body armor by RBP, as well as the rims that I got from them and a four inch lift kit. I hooked up with a company called Custom Offsets to do the install, and I will tell you, I highly recommend these guys. If you're looking for tires, wheels, or rims, Check them out. Custom Offsets, they're not paying me to say it. They're just that good of a company that I'm going to recommend them and feel comfortable about doing it. Now, some of the mods we did to get the Jeep to this point was new headlights, and those are by XK Glow. I found that they were almost half the price of the nearest, closest competitor. I also took the logs off and put on new bumpers by Warren. Now, the next step down the full metal jacket road is to give it that tough exterior coating. Now, they call theirs a Kevlar. What I heard inside the industry is they use Linex and then they put just a little pinch of Kevlar into the mix so that they can call it Kevlar. I don't know if that's true or not. And then doing more research, I found out Bullet Liner is a way better product than all of them combined. So I reached out to the top dog at Bullet Liner and wanted to find out how much it costs to do a Jeep like this. Well, it's not easy to do a Jeep like this and it means you gotta have a really skilled crew, guys that go the extra mile. So the main guy at Bullet Liner had me drive 600 miles to go to Mark's shop in Flint, Michigan because this is the go-to guy for this kind of stuff. And I'll tell you right now, I'm really happy I did this. These guys, the work they do is so far beyond what I ever expected them to do that I can't tell you how much I highly recommend these guys. So that's how you do it. So you fish the wire through. That way, just in case we lose the, we can't fit our finger, hands in there, so now we can pull it through. That's pretty clever. I'm guessing the Jeep guys know that trick pretty well, but if you don't know it, now you do. That's kind of clever. There's T30. Well, that's our next step after we get it torn apart. How are we going to do things? How are we going to mask it? Yeah. You know, it's trying to figure out the game plan, you know. Uh-huh. You know, it's before. It's like the big, you know, when you have that big game. Yep. You know, you can't just go to the game. You, you got to have, have a plan. You. So these guys have to remove everything off from the Jeep, including the clear coat over the paint. So everywhere you see blue, that has to be scuffed to make sure that the bullet liner will stick to it the right way. 
And when Mark and his team do a job, they take everything off. I mean, even the seals around the doors and windows come off. This guy is really picky. Nope, just joking. Yeah, we've had to take a jack with a, with a board put under the door, wiggle it back and forth with a jack, put a small little bit of pressure. And on the Jeeps? Yeah, mm -hmm. just get the doors really? off. Michigan they, Jeeps. They'll, they'll, yeah, Michigan, Michigan Jeeps. Jeeps. <laughs> Michigan. All, that, all that salt, all that salt and bad roads. <laughs> Good night, in the pink skies waving goodbye. She come out of break of night, leaving no traces around, around. She's trying to free, she's trying to free her reckless heart. She's trying to be a slide. slide so everything free. gets masked off, the doors all got pulled. The hood gets prepped. We just, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the doors in the back. We're gonna do the doors and underneath the hood first. We're gonna get all your, the door jams, all that coated. Get them textured, same with underneath the doors. Then we're gonna put the doors on. And then we're gonna bring the top, the top in, do the top so everything's smooth. Then we're gonna kind of get everything all together so it's all the same even texture. So it's, you know, if you lay things down, the texture's gonna level out, you know, smoother than things that are vertical. And the stuff dries super quick, doesn't it? Four to eight it? seconds. How much? Four to eight seconds. Four to eight. Like you can walk on it under a minute. <laughs> but then it takes 24 to harden. Yeah, 24 hour cure time. Okay. You know, the warmer the weather is, the quicker it cures, but we always say 24 hour cure time. Man, you guys slammed this out. You, know? you guys got all this prepped and ready to go. So you're gonna be probably spraying here in a little bit. Yeah, here in a couple hours, we just gotta make sure everything's right. You know, go through all our corners or edges, make sure everything's done. Hey Mike, what are you using? What what is this? This is a nylon cut brush. Okay. Use it for prepping all our beds, rocker jobs, anything that needs to knock down through clear coat, rust, anything like that. So what's the point of this step in the process? Just so the guys being know. All our hand sanding, we can get all the nooks and crannies and everything, get all large areas taken care of, except for like our main flats. That's an easy one with the palm sanders or the hand sanding and all the edges. So you have to knock the clear coat off? Yep. Yeah, we knock that down. We'll okay, so, right to that. so the clear coat comes off, mm -hmm. and then you don't have to knock the whole paint off. No. So you don't have to get this bare down to bare bones metal, Correct. right? We need to stick to paint. Just get to the raw paint? Yep. And then you can apply the bullet liner? Yeah. Okay. So the bigger areas he can use the nylon brush, but on the small areas, it's just tedious yeah. hand labor. And so you're using how much of a, what's the grit? I, I use 60 grit with 80 grit. You know, it, it has a little bit smoother finish. I like to have a rougher finish, but I like to try not to go to the bare steel at all. All right, and hey, if you guys are around the Flint, Michigan area, how can these guys find you? Because I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna, I've been watching this and I'm gonna give a personal testimony. These guys do the best job of anybody I've seen. I've been to two other places and the attention to detail that these guys do is way beyond it. So if you're around this area, check these guys out. What's the name of your shop? We're MJR Custom Coatings and Bolt Liner of Flint. You can put in spray on bed liners of Flint. Go to Facebook, MJR Custom Coatings, Instagram. Okay. Uh, or even see one of our billboards on the expressway, you know, back roads, you know, wherever you, know, you find us. All right. Yeah, if you guys are in the market in the area, these are the guys to go to. I won't. Let, I won't stop you. And you know what? I'm. They're not paying me to say this. I'm saying it because when I find something good, I like to share it. That's pretty much it. So after all the clear coat has been removed, it gets sprayed down with compressed air and then wiped down with an acetone to make sure nothing is left behind. Alright, so the store. I just caught Mark and he is cutting the seams off from the door. 
Why do you cut those off, Mark? Well, it looks a lot more appealing when it's, when it's all done. You also know, don't have divots in there. You don't have crevices. You don't have any, say if, you know, being you're from Minnesota, you're gonna have salt. You know, even though we're bedlining it, you don't want to have a crack, seam, or a crevice. So, so that's gonna look a lot more appealing when it's nice and smooth, you know, dang right. It's gonna be all seamed. That's the way to do it. So if you guys happen to run across me in my Jeep, make sure you open the door and then look down at the seams and check out how nice they are, right? Yep. That's how you do it. <laughs> Got them all blown off and really good. And then we walk through and I just don't wipe with the microfiber crag. Okay. All the, seals, sure. all the seals are cut off. I mean, you guys do a lot of, a lot of work. I mean, you've been prepping this thing for two days straight. Yep. I think that that and putting it back together are the two toughest parts, huh? Putting it back together, I believe. Oh yeah? Yep. He pulled the seam off and now he's putting a different kind back on. Mark is actually kind of nervous. And uh, I get the sense that he's not like nervous for the process, but he's very particular. And so he likes to go over every single detail before he sprays. So he's got the guys touching stuff up last minute. And what he says he likes to do before he gets started is just to walk around and get a general sense of exactly what he's going to do. So once he starts spraying, it's very fluid. kind of fascinating. It's like he plans out his course. And these guys know exactly what's going to happen next because as soon as he sprays the doors, they know that they're going to be popping those on. He says he usually likes to take about 20 minutes to do this. He just walks through everything, just make sure it's all perfectly set before he fires up the gun. Ready to get this going? Yeah. All right. So here's a pretty odd thing that happened when the Jeep got initially smashed. They may have replaced the headlights, I don't know, but the headlights were literally straight up and down. So I took those out and put new headlights by XK Glow on and bent bumpers by Warren. So once the doors are sprayed and the first coat is on, there's still two more steps in this process. And that means these guys got to hurry up and get these hung so they can do the next steps. The hinges are taped so they should work, but they still gotta be double checked before they know for sure how well it goes. They're testing to see how the doors close. So what is what comes after this then? Oh, what we're gonna do is we have texture with we have texture with the hood on. Well, basically everything we're basically gonna kind of somewhat have everything all together so it's all one even texture. Uh -huh. You know, instead of being a smooth texture, which will like if you lay the doors down, it's a smoother texture than vertical. You know, as you can kind of see, like just being down the texture differences of them, you know, they're kind of a little bit different. Yep. So we, when we do it, we want to have all the same. Secrets of the trade. All right, guys. One of the questions that always comes up, can you guess what it is? Everybody always says this one thing when it comes to bullet liner. 
or Rhino liner or Linex or any any coating material. How tough get, is it? Not how tough it is. That would how thick? No, not how thick. How much does it add extra weight does it add to the vehicle? Oh. Everybody's like, oh my god, that's gonna add so much no. extra weight. No, it doesn't add that much weight. It's not that heavy. No, it's not. No. I mean, people are, they think it weighs hundreds and hundreds of pounds, and it's yeah, like... usually if a no. whole vehicle usually adds about 40, 50 pounds. 40, 50 pounds. So one of the big things to look out for, Dan, is uh, is uh, over-texture. You can over-texture it, and it'll look... It almost looks like it has wormholes in it. It'll get real nasty, so it's... A, a total vehicle is a little harder, just because they're trying to encapsulate the whole thing and give it a nice uniform coverage, whereas a truck bed is a lot smaller, you can control it a little easier. You know, you're, you're texturing overall. You're standing back anyway when you do it. You're basically misting the material on. It's a little easier to control. Mm. So it, it takes a little longer. You have to walk around it. Just keep looking for the sheen and not sheen. Make sure it's uniform. It's just a little bit of an art to it. All right, you guys. Well, that's all we got for today, but we got a lot more videos coming at you. And if you want to see more Jeep videos, I need to hear from you. Do you like these? I know it's a little different than what I normally do. So if you guys tell me you want to see more Jeep videos, tell me what else you want to see done. A couple things that I still got to do to make this a Starwood Motors Jeep is I got to get better seats in it. I want to change out the doors. I want to do a couple other things, but I need to hear from you. If you guys like videos like this, I'll keep making them. And if you don't, I'll make something else. And as always, you guys, do me a favor and check out the other two videos that I've posted up here just for you guys. God bless and go get them.